slides which I'm covering right now is coming from Google Glass. So today we are going to focus on a very, very interesting topic called Power BI Query. You may like it. This is something I love it, especially for ETL perspective. So ETL perspective this is one of the most popular concepts. And you can see here, uh, we are missing, oh, Jeff is here, top of fact, file is free, is here. We are still missing a couple of things to remember, but fine. So Power BI Query. Okay. Ayala, question? Okay, perfect. So, data collections perspective, you may be asked question because there are a lot of interesting questions they ask about data collection. So, you can spend maybe around 15 20 minutes for this, this concept. So, you will be clear. I do have a small video and I would like you guys can read about it, watch about it because this will really help. And the cleaning part, we're going to do a couple of labs. One lab we'll do with file, and one lab we'll do with internet. So sometimes people ask about web scrapping. You can do that part with the uh, Power BI, which is very simple. And for analyze, analyze parting part, which we will do with some uh, Power BI desktop. So I'll cover that part also, Power BI desktop. And from high-end visualizations, there are some kind of machine learning and AI type of algorithms are there. So we will not use very advanced, advanced visualization, so you may like it. So let's get started with the first topic, data collection. So if somebody asked, how would you collect data? What would your answer would be? How would you collect the data? Like that's the first question. What, how would you answer that? Retrieving via SQL. Uh -huh. So collecting data means it comes from various sources. So let me draw it. <laughs> So let's say you are here, right? You are, this is your Power BI visualizations, right? Your visualizations are part is here. You are creating nice you know, charts, graphs, and all, right? But you know, I know, you can create tables, and you can create KPIs. You can do all those things, interesting thing here. However, first you need a data. Now data comes from various sources, right? Question remain, how do you collect data? Because when you collect the data, then, you have to clean the data. So cleaning data itself is a big challenge because you, you may have data which is not good quality data. Once you clean the data, the question is how you going, how you going to transform the data, right? So you have to transform. And once you transform, then you start doing analysis because transform means creating data in a consistent format, right? So transform. But my question is, how do you collect the data? Give me some interviews. Tip. Sorry? Interviews, surveys, feedbacks. Very good, very good. So very nice. So collecting data with various sources. The first source is you're gonna collect it. Let me make it bigger. Font. Font bigger, so it will be font. Okay. So first you collect data by interview. You got to connect and get the interview. So sometimes people what they do, they interview hundreds of people and get the data. When you when you when you interview people, it's more like like kind of your yes no or kind of spelling type of data you get. Some people do survey, so you get data from survey. What other ways you can get get data? Interview survey. Feedback or saying reviews. Review survey means review. Yeah, survey or review. Mm -hmm. What else? You should know about it because every time people will ask you so think about that how walmart how amazon how you know facebook how google collects data because they are in a data business right question questions so that's nothing but survey right you can get the data with the questions yes. Sorry? Yes. observation observation right this all right very good you collect that data what else Internet, cookies, cookies, data collection so, from your users. Mm -hmm. Product usage, yes. Mm -hmm. 
And also, an structured data can be collected from different social media platforms. Uh -huh. Social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you collect data various formats. So I have a small video. I just want to quickly walk, walk through that. It's in your agenda. It's in your homework also. So in PowerPoint, I gave you email, and in email you have agenda data collection based practices because you should read about it because not only people will ask you about how you collect the data. But then question is what challenge you will have. So when you collect the data, what challenge do you think you will have? What are the key challenges you will have when you collect the data? The data format. First is the format. Every data will have different format. Okay. Second data may not be correct. Sometimes data will be incorrect. So data complete or incomplete, right? So incomplete data. Right. Some maybe data duplications. They have data duplication problem, right? What else you will have? What challenge you will have? Mm -hmm. Sorry? I was going to tell me. You're breaking up, Priya. Priya, we cannot hear you. What other? Sorry. I'm not able to hear you. Data size. Data size. Data size. If your data is large, right? Mm -hmm. We will have a problem. Please, you know, participate because this is like our class, which is easy when you actively participate. It's very easy when you participate. What else? What other? Data structure. Data structure or security structure here. Uh, data security, right? So data security, right? Sometimes data access. Sometimes data velocity, speed. Do you guys agree or not? Now you will spend more time here actually than actually visualization, because data format or data structure. If somebody giving data in a like pipe delimiter, like example one pipe, let's say Tom. Then pipe, right? That's called pipe delimiter, right? In email. Or somebody people give you data one, comma, tom, comma, like this. So as you give data in different format, you will have a problem. The data normally when you come from various sources, one guy will be sending data maybe in JSON format. JSON format. One will be giving you data in XML format. One will give you data in the Excel format. One will give you data in a CSV format. Now, problem remain is you will have problem because you cannot transform this data because you are not a programmer and data comes in various form. How are you going to analyze this? So this is very important challenge format and structure. The good news, what uh, Power BI does, Power BI can read JSON, Power BI can read XML, Power BI do Excel and CSV, and then Power BI automatically convert into table form. It convert into table form, and then you can work on a uh, aggreg aggregation, join, report, and all. So you don't have to worry about what format and what structure data is coming. As long as data is coming, Power BI independently handle 134 structures. So Power BI supports 134 structures. So it doesn't matter where the data is or what format data is. Power BI is single-handed can talk to all different type of structures and format and transform into one format. So that is called transforming. It's automatically transformed. You don't have to write a single line of code. Power BI automatically transfer them into a table format, which is nothing but columns and rows, right? Any other questions? Any questions? Okay. Now data duplication. Sometimes data may come like in various data duplications. Sometimes you will have empty value, empty rows. Sometimes you're incomplete. So those are the things where you have a problem with the data duplication. The data size, what is data size means? It's a large volume. So think about that. If you're getting data from machine, right? A machine like jet engine. So jet engine, let's say tomorrow you're working uh, for Delta or United Airlines. So when plane, when plane flies, right? When plane flies, right? When plane flies, right? Plane will use 
lots of data. They are saying from here to here, one flight, they generate two terabytes of data. Now it's one flight, two terabytes of data. Now, if you get that data, how are you going to process this data? It's kind of humanly impossible to process two terabyte data in less than a few minutes. So in that case, you may need to come up with a strategy called rather than taking two terabyte, maybe you can do sampling. Maybe you can take sampling. Now people will ask, have you done sampling? So sampling means you take some data from available. So instead of two terabyte, maybe you can say first 10, 11, like that randomly you select some data and that data through you analyze and try to learn it. And then again, try randomly. So you don't have to wait for two terabyte. Maybe you can take some data and start doing analysis. So when you have large volume, you have a couple of strategy to apply. One strategy for large volume of data, when data is large, right? Then first thing you do is sampling. Rather than using all data processing, which is going to take time to do sample. The second thing you may want to do is, from this data, maybe you can select certain columns select certain columns, maybe you can select certain rows and then you can select, when you select certain column and certain rows, that way you can reduce the data volume and then you can analyze also. So that is also people do. The third thing people do is for filtering, you filter the data. You can say, you know, I'm gonna take data only for USA. So you're not really taking Canada and Mexico, you're just taking USA and you can process the data. So sampling is one thing, selection is another thing, Selection means you select a column which you are interested in or rows which you are interested in. And third is called filtering. Filtering means from available rows, you're gonna select certain rows and you analyze the data. So when your volume is high, don't just try to analyze straightforward. You have to apply uh, techniques, either sampling or selection or filtering. So far, so good. Any questions so far? Good, awesome. Now, what other problem you will have? So first is the data security. This is one of the most growing concerns. If somebody asks, what are the biggest challenge you have in analysis is the security. So when somebody says data security, what comes in your mind? What do you think by data security? Why it is a challenge? Why data security is a challenge? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, <clears throat> many rules and regulations, federal regula regulations, so you have to keep it secure for access even from your employees. Very nice. So data security means first of all, who? Second thing, what? And third is the where. So whenever somebody says data security, these three things you should. Also, you can say how. Let me explain one by one. So who means who has access? Who has access, right? Because if you have some people, you don't want to have access. So who has access? What access means they can do reading, right? They can do write, right? Can they delete? Can they change? What kind of access they have, right? Then where they have access? Where in the sense of when I'm storing the data, they have access. When I'm processing data, they have access. When I'm doing reporting, they, they have access, right? Uh, Am I storing in USA? Do they have access from USA? When I'm doing reporting, they are in Europe. Will they have access to that? And how? Means like example, are they accessing through browser? Are they accessing through mobile device? Are they accessing from the laptop? Are they accessing from corporate? So there are a lot of concerns you will have. So you need to define, they call guardrail. What they call? Guardrail. Guardrail means how you can protect your data guardrail because you have to define guardrail, otherwise what will happen? Anybody can access any data. And data is more sensitive. If somebody sees the data which they shouldn't be doing, then you will have a security incident. Now it's gonna create a problem. So when you collect, when you're in analysis business, you do need to also understand data security because there are standards, who, what, where, how people will audit it. And there are standards people will ask in interview, have you followed PII standard? where you personally identify information. It means you should, if you're storing first name, last name, email, phone, then you better hide those or don't allow access to other people. You also need to de define the some kind of policy. Whatever I'm storing, what purpose I'm storing, the data only should be used for that purpose. You should never uh, use this data for any other purpose. So PI is a personally identified information where first name, last name, email, you're storing and processing. 
Another format is called PACR, which is called public uh, personal credit card. Credit card info. So public credit card information means you know, if you have private credit card info, whatever you call, but credit card, if you're storing credit card, then you need to make sure data is encrypted. And again, same concept, who can access, what they can access, how they can access. Your data should not be plain, making sure data is encrypted. If you are using child data, then there is a standard called COPA. So make, make sure you have kind of child, uh, child operation private privacy act. Make sure you follow that also. If you are using healthcare, follow that as a seven HIPAA, sorry, not just a HIPAA, HIPAA standard. Now, this is like no one will ask you details. The only thing remember patient details, patient symptoms, pa patient like uh, diseases. You should not publicize, neither you should expose it. So, data security require you should know a little bit about PII, a little bit about PCI, a little bit about encryption, a little bit about HIPAA and all. Depend on which company you are applying. If you're applying for healthcare, they will ask you HIPAA. So you may want to read a little bit about that because you cannot just process the data without understanding HIPAA because it allows you what to protect, how to protect, protect and from whom to protect. Any questions so far? So far so good. Now, next question, the data access. So whenever somebody says data access, so like example, this is your data. And in this data, let's say your data is stored in a columns and rows, just means an easy example. Now, if somebody needs the access, then they will ask question, how Power BI they provide security? Because access is a security. We, we call CIA, CIA, right? And I'm sure you know CIA means confidential, confidentiality. Confidentiality means you hide it, not show. Integrity means don't change and access. So confidentiality means not show it. And integrity means if somebody uh, have access before and after data remain integrity in access. So again, access is very important. Access means what you should allow and how do you stop? So they will ask question in the interview, Power BI, what kind of access Power BI provide? So Power BI provide role level security. And through Power BI, you can say, you can do this and you can do this. And Power BI create a role, role. And through role, you can control that these are the things you can do and these are the things you cannot do. So Power BI gives you role-based security. Also, Power BI doesn't have any other base security. So role, so if I'm in New York, then I can do New York data. And if I'm in Illinois, I can do Illinois data also. So I can create a role-based security and I can filter based on the role. I can filter what data you can see and you cannot see. So role-based data. And also rule, you can uh, row also, row in the sense of, in your case, it's a row that when you are going through this aspect, that which rows you can access, that type of that thing called filtering. So example, if I say New York, my role is New York manager, then I can see these rows. I can see these rows. And if my, my role is, let's say, Illinois, I can see this row. So those type of security Power BI provide. But Power BI right now follow only row-based security, row-based security. Now, data speed. If your data speeds, this is a very important question. Because right now, there are three ways, three or four ways you will be able to touch the data. One data, you're getting offline data. Offline data means data is, is coming sometimes. You don't know when it is coming, but it's coming, but it's not coming regularly. So like example, in the morning, you get a data. And then you have enough time to process the data. And maybe next morning, you get data. So you are getting data offline. But let's say you're doing day, you're saying data, and every one hour you get data, that's called near real time. Near, near real time. Near real time means your data keep coming every one minute or every 10 minutes, your data is coming. But not instantly, but near real time. Maybe every 10 minutes, maybe every one hour. And the third one is called real time. Please understand this concept is important for you in the interview perspective as well as real job perspective, in real time. So the biggest problem you will have is a real time data. Because if data comes in a high, high speed, if data comes in a high speed, right? And it's a real time, you need to process it quickly. If you don't process, then it won't work. Offline, you have enough time because offline means data is stored in a file format. Somewhere data is stored in a file format, or data is stored in a some kind of database and data is right now on a rest. Rest in the sense of it's stored, and it's sitting there somewhere. Near real time and real time. Near real time, you get enough time to process. And real time, it's a fire hose. 
you know, just like water is coming, data is coming. So in this situation, what should we do? So let's talk about this architecture, which will help you to understand. So Power BI is the last stage in the game. So Power BI comes in a reporting format, which we call reporting. So Power BI is more about reporting. So whenever I say Power BI, we talk about reporting. The data is always the first layer, collecting data. So collecting data, let's say data is coming real time. And let's say every minute, maybe, you're getting 2 GB data from Facebook, Twitter, like that, or some kind of basic like target data and all you're getting. So when you get that, you, Power BI cannot process that fast. So Power BI has said, hey, can you create an interim, interim setup, which we call uh, storage or interim. So what normally people do, allow data and store it. So they use some kind of buffering system. That buffering system is called middleware. We call middleware. Middleware means it's kind of store the data. And you kind of middleware, so your data comes here and you can store here. The data is there, it's stored. And then Power BI can read this middleware or some program, Java program or Python, can read this middleware and then store into database. Once you store, then Power BI can read the data. So Power BI, Power BI a couple of ways you can store it. Either through database it can read or Power BI can go to middleware. Now when I say middleware, is nothing but storage. It's a storage where customer data keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. This middleware is very popular. It's called Kafka. Most of the Power BI uh, framework, you will see this word called Kafka. Kafka is nothing but you don't have to know in and out. It's just nothing but middleware because data is coming so fast. So you need to store somewhere and then have other programs to read the data and then start processing. You may not be able to process all data at once. So this middleware will give you opportunity to start from top and you can do that while data, new data is keep being added in the middleware. So Kafka is a middleware. Most people use Kafka nowadays. Almost all my company, like example in Sears, when you do POS, data keep coming. And POS or real time, uh, when, you, when you purchase data keep coming, every second data is coming as people are buying from POS. Then we get the data and put it in the middleware, which is nothing but Kafka. And then when, when we have our time, our program can start reading that and then process the data and put it in a store in the database. Once you store in database, then Power BI can read the database and generate report and either email the report or, or create a nice dashboard. So this is what people will ask about middleware if data has a speed issue. Any questions so far? So far, so good? Okay. So I'm hoping that you're very clear with this thing. Please understand you may expect such kind of questions in interview. Has nothing to do with Power BI, but because Power BI comes in the pipeline, so that's why it is. Now the next question people will ask about called data processing pipeline. Data processing pipeline is one of the most important thing for us. So what is processing pipeline, which I taught many times? End to end. So collecting data, right? When you collect the data, from collecting data, you kind of clean the data, right? Then you process the data. Then you transform the data, you create this pipeline, transport the data, then you process the data, store the data like that. So this pipeline, some of the place you will be involved, like you might be involved in reporting, some of you might be reporting here, and this is end-to-end -end pipeline. So sometimes people measure from start to end, like example, you got deep data 9 o'clock, and you generate a report, that's 9.30. In that case, the data pipeline took 30 minutes. 30 minutes your data did not go through. So the pipeline time is 30 minutes. Now, customer may not like 30 minutes waiting. So that's why your role is to optimize this pipeline, right? Now, part, part of today's, today's uh, lesson, we are only going to work on toilet cleaning and transforming. So this is the pipeline we are focusing today, cleaning and transforming. And cleaning and transforming, we can use Power BI Query. So Power BI Query is very easy tool for clearing the data and transforming data. Make sense? If you are good with this, let's do some lab so you can see how it works, okay? So why don't you start your Power BI, Power BI machine.
Start your Power BI desktop.
Okay, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Let me know if you are back, just give me a thumbs up so we can continue. Everyone is back, back, back. I will say back. Good, 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 good. Awesome. So you can see how a lot of interesting things you can do here. Again, this is like interesting. Now, once you complete all the work, let's say you feel like everything is done. And if you want to take this item to your, what you call Power BI desktop, the only thing you need to do is on the, on the menu, you can see a choose and apply. So when you say choose and apply, all those items you have, you can apply it. Now, many times people say that, what if you are not interested in USA? Can I filter here? Answer is absolutely. So if you want to do filter here, if you want to remove some rows, you can do last thing, like example, if you want to filter here, just an example uh, here, just example, if I go to uh, here and I say, no, I don't want to do New Zealand, I want to just do USA, select the USA only. Okay, so you to select it, that's EMP. So now you can see here, you have, I'm selecting you employee here table and I have this record. Now, if I want to do select this and as a choose and apply, you have options here. You can see here, uh, close and apply. So you can see here, I'm closing this one and apply. When I apply, this info information will go to Power BI desktop. So it's very important in the time. So here I'm selecting here, and I'm closing. Closing means I close the Power BI. So boom, I will be going to Power BI Desktop. So you can see now I'm coming to Power BI Desktop and in a few minutes you will see all those tables which I have massaged or format, whatever you call. It's now going to show up in the fridge side. This is the way. So Power BI query is nothing but getting the data, right? You're getting the data, then you clean the data. And Power BI query is more used as an ETL, extract, transform, and load, and then it will come to the Power BI desktop with the metadata here on your field side, so you can now do reporting. Make sense? Any questions, concerns, doubt? So, yes. I was able to crash the query earlier, and I'm not sure how I did it, and I mm -hmm. had to restart it, so I lost all of our um, work. Mm -hmm. Could you email me the M code? And maybe oh, I can drop it in. Awesome. I, I have in my memory. So if I can get you that one second, I think that's a very good practice we can do. So I have everything in my memory. Let me do one thing I can do in Google Glass. That way you have access to everyone. So along with the data file, I'll give you M code. And I have in my memory. Yes, I do. I do have in my memory. So you do need to get the EMP table. You see what I'm saying? And I'm gonna save it. So if I go here and then save, you get that. So now you can get it from in a Google Class. Mike, so you can get from Google Class. So what you do need to, you need to, uh, in a desktop, you import uh, and get the data, which I gave you, and then load the data. Once you load the data, you are going to Power BI, load and transform, I mistake load and transform, then you will go to Power BI query, right? So the, I'll show you quickly in case that helps. Uh, okay. You go to first, you will import a file, get data, right? File, get data, right? And when you go to the get data, you go to Excel. Go to Excel, and then you get the data, which I gave you this one, clean okay. data. Once you open it, you get a navigator. In Navigator, you select the EMP and do load and transform. Load and transform. So when you do load and transform, you will go to Power BI query. I'm going to do the same thing along with you so you can see that. That's a good question, by the way. Very good question. So that way you can have practice also. So now I do, I do, I do have it loaded um, yeah. through the Navigator. I have the yeah. I have that. I'm in there. So, so now click on transform data. Going to transform data, we are going to Power BI query. And the first thing you do is advanced editor. If it is not visible, check your you're in home menu. It's in the 
file of home menu. Do you see that advanced editor? So I'm in a file menu. And here you can see home menu. You have an advanced home menu, advanced editor. So home menu, advanced editor. And you click on that advanced editor and then you paste it. You remove this thing. Whatever you have, just remove that. Just highlight and click. remove that. And do control V and done. Magic for you. Make sense? Easy? Yes, I'm pulling it up right now. Nice, nice. Nice, nice. Any other questions for a mini one? That is great there. And you said done. And do the magic. Once you do that part, you may want to close and apply. Close and apply. Okay, now I wanna show you something interesting. This is something you may like it. So I, you see this, I got the clean data all out here nicely, but I also wanna do web scrapping. This is something you may like more. Because web scrapping is so much fun. First, I wanna show you the example. So I think it will help you. So if I go to Google and I'll find some site which has a good table. So like example, if I say, uh, I dot uh, data some good here. Data. Let me see, and I'll give you that thing if I can. Get. So this is more than a C. Table. I'm just trying to get a good data for you guys. Give me a second. When I'm looking, I'm sometimes not finding that. That's always the case. That COVID table. Let's take the table. This might be okay. Let's see if it will be Just want to give a good data. This might work. Yeah. This might work. We, we can try at least. We put you the link in the chat. We can at least try, right? Nothing wrong in the try. So I put it in the chat. See if you can click on that and see, get the data. So you see, they have nice data here. If this works, I'll keep it for the next. A batch also because I always have a trouble to find the good data, bad data type of thing. So you can see here, this is a website. This website gives you nice table. Now my goal here is to get this type of data into Power BI so I can analyze my own my own way. Most people what they do, they copy paste and create Excel file and all additional work they did. So this is called extracting. We want to extract the data. We want to extract the data from this website and get into Power BI. So that's what we want to do. How to do that? So let's do it together. So we will have two win windows. One is Power BI query and one is desktop. If you have desktop only, that's perfectly fine. If you have Power BI query, not a problem. Keep it like that. So I'm going to go to Power BI desktop. So let's click on a Power BI desktop. Now, click on menu, file menu. Repeat again, file menu, file menu, or you can do get data, whichever works for you. So file menu, and then you can say get data. 
and in get data you will go all the way down and you're going to say get data to get started like that so if you can click on that it will give you options dialog box where we have option called web so we are going to get data from web which is i like the most because it's pretty easy to get or grab the data it does its own scrapping and all you may like it let it come my machine is taking time because i have so much data now i'm hoping it will come yes now you search your web so you search on web you get the options called web make sure you search web you get the options of web now click on web so when you click on web you have options to connect so first you search web and then you select web now you're going to say connect so now we need to click on a connect you are now going to paste the url so the url which you gave here you paste it here so what will happen this one will make a call to this url and try to see if there are table if there are table it will create multiple table view for you so wherever it is saying table it will bring the table so it will do scrapping web scrapping for you pretty good huh so if i say okay it's going to take a minute or two and it's going to scrape it is you want to do this are you sure i say yes so there are if there's a login aspect if you need to log you can also do authentications you can log in but in our case anonymous is fine so now i can say connect now it's going to get that thing so you can see right now it's making a call and try to grab the data so when you get the data it will give you options if everything works well not all the time it works but most of the time it works it will give you the table how many tables you have in that page and it will give you preview also which is pretty good man. i love it because it does web scrapping and so far it looks like going well let's see if it's you know, bring the tables for us then it, it is easy for us to clean and all so right now you can see right now it's giving a two view table view and web view so it's going to grab it so it's still grabbing so you can see i found this many tables so now if i click on this it's going to give you what table we found so it will give you table so you can see that this table it found pretty good huh it found a table it doesn't know the name of the column but it found a table if you do web view then it is like this it is found like that web view so in web view it looks like that and table view it looks like that so it automatically found if i say html code so this is the code and the web view it's like that so display text you got this so again it gives you kind of idea but let's say i have this table now if i want to do some analysis i can always go to uh, what you call in a power bi query i can change the column heading i can change the column heading i can do the work so like example let's i click on that so i click on that so you can see now i selected this right now i'm going to go to transform data so i'll click on transform data and when i transform data i'll go to power bi query and the way power bi query works is you can see here you have column one sometimes if you want, if you have a column here and if you want to go up you can select here and you can in a transform and you can say use first row first row as a heading sometimes you will, your heading will shift sometimes so you may want to select here and you can do use your first row as a heading so it automatically it become heading but in this case it's not the case so you double click here and just write down let the country right and here write down maybe covid cases right covid cases so you have now two columns right everything looks good so you can this table which you have which i can say change the table double click on that and change the table once you do that you just apply so go to file menu and close and apply close and apply so that table will come to here so now we kind of did a couple of exercise for power bi queries so now we can do analysis so we are here so it will come in a few minutes it may take a while but it will come 
Good news about Power BI Query that you can keep applying the steps. Once you have steps ready, you can apply. Now, let's say I want to analyze. So you already know last week we discussed about there are three views, right? One is report view, second is the data view, and third is the data model. So this is data sheets and data model. We have not talked about data model, we'll talk about next week. But data sheets, so if you like to see that, let's example, if I click on COVID, I click on COVID, and then if I go to data view, you can see all the data, which I got it from where, which is easy way you can get the data. Boom, boom, boom. So you can get the data. For some reason it's not showing up here. It's not showing, maybe it's translating. I was there. Something happened. No problem. But data needs to be there. Auto recover content. Some recover files haven't been opened. Okay, that's fine. So we record file. I don't need any of them. That's fine. I don't know. So some reason the data disappeared. I don't know why it disappeared. Not showing. Are you guys able to see the data here? I thought there were number was here. Are you guys seeing or only I'm having problem? Hello? Are you guys able to see the data or no? When I imported this data, Yes, I can see. You can see, right? That's what I was thinking. I should see, but some reason I'm not able to see. But anyway, that's fine. Let's go to employee table. That would be the best. Employee, you are able to see, right? So if you go to employee, you can see now if I go to COVID, does also for me, employee is fine. So now I want to do some kind of analysis. So here also you can do, you can also add certain certain things you can add here. So example, here also you can do new column. So just like a Power BI query, you can do new column. Here also you can do new column. Here also you can do filter. Example, if you want to do filter, you can also apply filter here. So there are basic, basic massaging you can also do here. So in case if you want to do some kind of massaging, you can do it here also. But data sheets does not give you that kind of feature as Power BI. So sometimes the people ask, how do you go back and forth? Like example, you realize mistake. If you realize mistake here and you want to do cleaning, you want to go to Power BI uh, query, there are a couple of ways you can go. You, you right click on the table and you can say edit query. Edit query. So if you do right click on the table and you can edit query, it will go to Power BI. Power BI query, where you take a Power BI query and you can modify and then you can apply, you come back. So anytime you want to go to edit query, you can do like now. So you can do back and forth any many time you want to do, you can do that also. So again, no problem. But right now, I think data looks good. But if I want to go, I can right click on the table. I can do edit query. You can see it will open in Power BI query and I'm in there. I can make the changes if I want and I can you know, close and apply and then it will go to Power BI thing. So I can, I can do that. So if I do close and apply, it will take me to the yes. easy. Now, at this moment, I want to do reporting. So let's click on the report and we will cover some of the things which we did not cover last week. So we are in report. Now, many times reporting is important. So right now we are in these, some of the things we have not covered. So a decomposition that we cover. So right now I have employee here and these are the tables I have. Now let's say I want to know how are we doing country-wise salary? So check it out. So I put decomposition. This is the one I put decompositions. First of all, when should I use decomposition? If you want to detail, detail breakdown, right? Detail breakdown. So you can detail breakdown, then decomposition allows you detail breakdown. So it kind of give a much more knowledge about that. So think about Microsoft. If somebody asks Microsoft, how much money you are making? Microsoft said 2 billion, 2 billion I make. Then the question is which country doing how? Then okay, which can which state is doing how? Which product we're doing how? So something like that will do. So for that, let's start with maybe card. Let's put a card first. Maybe it will be easy. Let's put a card. So I put a card here. I put a card. So I put a card here, and then you drag and drop maybe profit. Do we have profit here? No, there is no profit here. So we'll select the salary only. So let's drag and drop salary. Okay. So that will give me total salary, right? 
Now, if you saw that this is called KPM, so you can see in employee, in employee, I selected this card first, not this card, sorry for that, this card, and then I selected salary. So it does automatically salary. Now, naturally, when you give something like that, there will be a questions about how, what, like that. To solve that problem, we're gonna do decomposition. So now, put your cursor somewhere here, and then click on decomposition. This is my favorite actually i like that because you can do much more analysis so you put that and you can do focus so go to focus so when you go to focus it will allow you to zoom better right now the first thing you need to put salary because you are interested in that so you drag the salary and drop it here so it will tell you the same number as the other one was given now you need to ask question how i got this much salary so first I'll put a country. So I drag and drop country. So it will give me a plus sign. I drag and drop come, it give me plus sign. And if you click on that, it will tell me high or high value or low value. So I'll say high value. So you can see now it will give me the country based on country division. So you can see right now I have only one country. So you can say this amount come from this country. So I'm not satisfied. So now I drag and drop department. So I drag and drop department. So now it will give me plus high value. So you can see here this department. So high is on the top. So you can see training department got this much money, services got this much money, marketing got this. So if you combine this thing, this is what I got. Mm. That gives me more data. So you can see if I have multiple country, I would get multiple country here as well, but because I have only one country. Now you might be interested in gender. Just drag and drop. Just drag and drop. So now you drag and drop. So you can see in gender, in USA, 10 female are making this much money, males are making this much money. And if you click on plus, you can say high value. So now in female or department, females are doing. And if you click here, if you click here, this side, uh, you will you get that information. So every area, you can now do decomposition. So it kind of gives you much more granular level which departments are doing. So if I do male, training department is doing good than product management. If I go to female, and if I look for that, the in female, so you can see here, in female services departments are doing great. Marketing, so you can see right now, for male, training departments are doing good and product management. For female, it's the services and marketing doing good. Now, if I need to hire female, maybe I will hire in this department because they are doing pretty good here, right? If I need to hire male, then maybe I will be hiring here and the product management. So this gives you clue uh, where we are having profit, I mean, you know, impact on that. Now, if you don't like that, you can cancel that, you can cancel that, you can cancel that, and you can cancel it. So good news about it, this plus sign allows you to expand. So if you click expand, now you can say low value. So where we are having a low value. So like you can see here, your focus is started with the low value. So here the research is the low value. If you start with high value, then it goes here. Now you can see, I want to do plus sign, and you can say high value, low value, you can define, and you have two options, which is called, this is called classification. Do you want to go to country or gender? So let's say for product, I want to do gender. And from gender, I can say here, so you can say for business department, this is the difference. And if you do it here, now let's say I want to do country, so you can see that. So again, decomposition allows you a great way to you know, divide and conquer, and you can see which departments are doing good, what they are doing and all, you can see that. Question, concerns, doubt about department. Well, once you're done, you go back to report, and then graph will be visible here as well, right? So you double click here, and you can just say maybe report, report one, so just double click here, and it's a report one. This report is very good for you want to know drill down type of things. Nice drill down type thing. Now click on the plus sign. Double click on it. <clears throat> let's say I want to do another report. So I will select. Let's say uh, here I'll select this one, which is a tree map. So let's select the tree map. Now tree map is very powerful if you have a lot more grouping. If you have a lot more grouping, tree map will be good. So 
So let's put the tree map first. So I'll put a tree map. First of all, when should I use tree map? So when you have so many groupings, tree map is good because tree map gives you block, block, which have a big block, and that will be a high and smaller block will be small. So right now this is that. So now I want to know total salary. Same concept, drag and drop salary. So you can see entire block is salary right now. Now if I do gender, there will be 2D, you can check it out. So it will know, you can see that definitely female gender is doing good. Let me make a focus. Focus allows you to do a little bit more bigger font so you can see better. So you can see female is definitely doing better than male. Now you can say department. So you drag the department and you can see now in departments, you can see here services department definitely and marketing department definitely females are doing good and research department females are doing worse. Male training and product is doing good and research they are doing bad. Now, let's say if I, you know, if, if I have other options here, which I do not have, otherwise I could also add another option. So when you have too much grouping, it's crystal clear that this group and these groups are doing awesome job. Questions? Tree map is very visible when you do the grouping aspects. Clear? Now, some of you might be interested in filter because there's a filter available. Because if you have so much that minute detail, sometimes you may not be able to focus. So here you can see filter. There are department is the one filter is available, gender level filter, and sum of salary. So if you click on this arrow, you will have options available. So you can see here basic filter and you have advanced filter. So you have two options here, basic and advanced. So now you are asking question, which which is the top department, top end? Which is the top department? So first you are having a department. So department, these are all departments. Now I say I want to say top, top five. So if I click on top five and I say five, right? And if I apply that, data fills here, one second, top five, and I'll say salary, right? And if I apply the filter, so top five, I put it five here, and I drag and drop salary here. Now, if I apply filter, let me repeat. For department, I selected, you know, there was a basic here, I selected top, and I selected five, sum of salary, and a drag and drop salary. So I drag and drop salary here, and I say apply filter. When I apply filter, you can see now the team app will be much more easier to read because you have done top five. You can also do top two. Like that, so it's more readable. So you can see here if I need to focus, these are two departments I'll focus. For male, female, I'll focus on services. Here I have training, and male, I focus training and services. You may have questions to yourself. If it's top, what are the bottom? You may select here top to bottom, and you can apply. And now you can select that engineering and research is bottom for female, engineering research is bottom also for male, also. So you can, you can see that, you can apply that part. Questions? Right. So once you are done with that, you can just do back to report. Back to report. So you can do that. Now, <clears throat> you show the salary in comparison to the count of the employees. Sorry, what is the question? The count of the male or female. Count here. Right. Yeah. So based on. One second. Yeah. So I have selected salary here. So I had to say count. Uh, so I will use the name there uh, because if I need to count, then what I'm going to do, I am use gender here, right? So gender will automatically give me count. So if I put it here, gender, so then it will give me count here, right? Make sense? So I'll do count here, and this is the count. So you can you can count that again. You want top or all? Basic filtering. So do basic filtering. This is a count. So in, the, in that case, gender is all. So if you want like a particular filter, right? So let, let me repeat, repeat again. Let me clear here. So right now the basic filter, and if I do top 10, right? And let's say I want to say top two based on, based on the female or gender count. So I'll select gender. I put the gender here, the gender here. So we can check it out. So this is the gender. And 
if I click in this one, there's an option called count distinct. So it's a count for now. So you can see here it's counting all, right? Uh, top two, and let me apply filter. So in this situation, it, let me do focus so you can see better. It appears the based on the research, top two count of based on gender, so female is services and training. And here training is first and services. So that is the way to think. Good. If you want to do state, you. yeah, no problem. If you want to do state also, you can put it here state and you can see which state they are doing better. So it's a count state wise, map map filter. And same concept applies here as well. Looks like they are doing pretty good here in the services and training and training and services here. Good. Now let's do one more here. So I added in here. Now there's one concept is this one. Let's see if we can get this goal. Do we have a date here? No, we don't have that. Maybe start date. It won't give a good result here. So for that, I need to change the data. Uh, for that, I need to change the data. So right now, let's do change the data because I want to show you some of the good charts here. So if you see the data, there is one data called visual, right? Visual. So let's go back to our visual and select the sample store. Let's go to sample store and we're going to do a couple of reports here. So I'm going to copy this, the visual, and in visual, the data sample store is good data. So I click here. And I can click here straightforward and get the data. So I can click on that and it's straightforward. I can get it. So I don't have to go to a couple of steps to get an Excel data. You can also get from Power BI data sets. I think last week we discussed about one data set, two other data sets, and there are many more data sets you can get. But right now, we're going to go to Excel. So if I click on Excel, I do Control V and I'll select Sample, Sample Superstore. This is, I really like this data set because you can do any any kind of analysis here. And from there, we're going to select order. There are multiple tabs out there. These are all tabs. I'm not interested in all tabs. Next week, I'll show you how to do joints. But right now, I like this thing. Make sure you see the data. Data looks good. I can also you know, take it to the Power BI query and all, but you know now how to do that in case if you want to do some kind of massages, but right now looks good. So I'm going to reload. If I go to load, I go to Power BI. If I go to Power load data transform, I'll go to Power BI query. So right now load it. Couple of analysis are really, really good. I really like that. And I'm hoping that when you see it, you'll understand. It. So now I have data available, which is called order data. And I'm in a new new page, right? You can always give a name. These are page, you can toggle, you can move it around. These are your report pages. So you can create as many reports you want. You can create a report, you can move it around. These are easy, you can do that as well. You can hide, delete, rename and all, right? Now, right now, I want to show you something you may like here. That's called influencing chart. So if you move mouse, key influencer, this is really, really advanced, okay? It has a really good algorithm built in. Again, we are using free version. Production version has a little bit more better features. So if I click on it, and if I make it bigger. Question is, when should I use this chart? So this chart, listen carefully. In a normal company, you are hiring managers. Managers should have two types of skills. One is the business skills, and one is the domain skills, which is business means where you are working and domain skill, domain skill means how you can grow the business, right? So example, if I hire a person who are a sales manager, if I hire a sales manager, that's a business. So he needs to know how the business, what product business has, what customers we have, what we are doing, where we are growing, where we are challenged, like the business skill. And domain skill means how the overall market, this is the market and how, what others are doing. 
and what are the opportunities there? How can we win and all? So this is like that. Now, normal people spend years to get the domain skill, right? Power BI remove that all those things and make it easy with the data. So Power BI say you don't need to have years of experience to be sales manager because sales manager make decisions to grow the sales or grow the revenue. And that's what the decision they make. Power BI gives you that same freedom in less than two minutes. You all become a sales manager. You don't have to spend years, neither you have to do MBA, neither you have to have years of experience. The only thing through Power BI, within two minutes, you make a decision what to do next and what is the right thing and what is the wrong thing. So for that, you use influencing graph. So I use that graph and then I focus. So when I focus, it's big. Now my area is more profit. So let's put it a profit. So I want to know what helps me to make a profit. That's the influencing. Influencing means how it is helping or hurting profit. So factor. So I'm going to drag the, and drop the profit here. So when I drag and drop, it is asking question. Do you are, are you interested in knowing increasing the profit or are you knowing interested in decreasing the profit? So here I'm definitely profit. I want to be increasing. So I want to increase the profit. So now I want to know what should I do? What factor I should focus so I can increase my profit? Wow, that's a pretty good question. So now you have available choices. You have available choice so many. This is called fact factors, influencing factor. We don't know which factor is affecting, but Power BI knows it. So check it out. So if I drag region and if I put it here, Power BI said it will help or not. So power I drag and drop region. So I drag and drop region and say is profit her region has any impact on profit is region has any impact on profit so power bi say no influencing factor so don't worry about region there is nothing region has no factor okay so now i go back and say what about cells do the cells has impact so if i drag and drop cells so power bi will do analysis and say based on your data there is an impact and check it out it does say that listen carefully sum of cells is more than this so if you do if you sell more than this, then your profit increases. So now this is a very good learning. So sum of sales, if you did, so example, if you sell this 50, 50, if you sell 57 or less sales, like example, if you sell product 57 or less, then you're actually making loss. You're making loss. You see dotted line, that's a loss. So if somebody say, I sold this item, then you're making loss. So Power BI said that if you are sum of sales is more than that, means if you sell it, when you do order, right? When you do order, if the order is less than 57, don't even sell it, you are making loss. This is also, you're making loss. But if your sum of sales is this, then you're making 142. So what normally salesperson will do, they don't, they have, let's say five products, just an example, five one, product two, product three, product four, so what they're going to do, they're going to give you combo discount. And you know that if you are going to get 464, so like 470, let's say example 470, or they make it $500, just an example. So if you do $500, they are going to give you $50 off. So every $500, company is going to make $142 based on this data. They may give you $50, $50 off. So still company is going to make $95 profit extra. You as a customer will be attracted because you are you are going to get a fifty dollar off. So customer get fifty dollar, company get ninety dollar, and all all wins. That's why in America you might have seen this thing called sales, sales, and sales. And sometimes if you do this, you get a combination sales. Why? Because if you do it well, because customer is one. Normally customer might buy one product one, or maybe he will buy product two. But because I give him $50 off or $50 discount, suddenly he ended up buying more items. And when he ended up buying more items, you don't have to do stock, you don't have to do unnecessary packaging or stocking, managing, administration. You are selling more. You are not losing money, by the way. You are giving him a discount because you are knowing that the guaranteed I'm going to make this much profit. So $50 you are giving him, $95. So you are now making what this is called bigger basket. So initially each basket was only buying one product, but you increase the basket. So because you give a lot of discount, you increase the profit. Now, that's for sure that if I sell more than 462, I'm gonna get more money, perfect. So that type of thing is called business inclusion. Now your sales team will make 
So now your search team started giving discount, $50. Now your question is, is $50 the right discount? If I'm giving $50, will it hurt my profit and how much? Should I give $10 profit? Should I give $70? What is my leg room? So leg room is maximum, like example, sometimes we call employee, sometimes give personal discount to you. Why? Right? Because they have leg room 140. From 140, they have used already $50 to you. So they give you 50. So maximum they have 90. So if you do negotiation, if you do negotiation, they might also give you $20 off. Why? Because still they are making a profit. And this is what happened in a car dealer business. Because car dealer business, if you just do a little bit of negotiation, there will be additional $500 or $1,000 discount you get because the item is big item and there's always a big room. That is, this is the ceiling. If you ask, hey, give me $200 discount and I buy 500, nothing will happen because they know this number. Number is visible. So that's what visible is. So now the question is, what should I give discount? If I give discount, what would be? So there is a column here, discount somewhere. Yeah. So now I'm gonna drag and drop here and see if discount has any impact on profit. So if I drag and drop discount, so it will give me some story. So you can see here, if sum of sale is this, you get this. And if discount is zero or less, you get this much profit. So you get a profit if discount is zero or less. So technically speaking, you should not give a discount because if each product you give a discount, then you're losing money. But rather than that, you can give a combination product and give a discount, which is $50, then you make money. But if you, if you, if you give a discount zero or less, then you're going to make more money. So that's what it is. Now, he said, fine, I like that. What about the region? We talk about region. Do we have quantity problems? So if I put a quantity, if person by one versus person by 10, what happens? So here, I didn't see any. So profit is more likely increased when the sum of sell is this, otherwise not. So I did not see uh, quantity. I don't see any impact, right? Did you guys see any impact complete quantity? Let me remove discount for a second and sets for a second and region on second and just focus on quantity. Right. So quantity is not a quantity doesn't matter. Quantity doesn't matter. So that's not a problem. Uh, do we have anything else? So now let's say based on the data, shipping mode. Let's talk about shipping mode. Do the, the shipping mode has any uh, Thing. I'm going to remove the quantity and see if shipping mode has any. No, shipping mode has no impact. I mean, there is no need to worry about shipping mode. Uh, do I have any other thing? Let's say country and region. So, no, country and region has no impact. Okay. What about product? Do I have product as in product name? No original found, tiring, more some more field explained by. So no, that doesn't have any impact. So technically speaking, only few segment we check about quantity, we check about profit, we talk about um, the other field does not have impact. So basically it looks to me, sales has a bigger impact. So if you follow that sales idea, Try to sell more than $460 item, which is clearly visible. And the second thing, it does have an impact a little bit about is discount. So if I drag discount, get that information. I put it here, what happens? No, that's fine. So you can see here, discount does have impact. And that's what we talk about. This kind of things, it takes years to reach this level. Years, because you don't know which factor is it. So sometimes if you are doing the wrong factor, then your advertisement, your marketing, you're wasting money, but you're not getting the return. And that's why they call diminish, diminish of return. Diminish of return means your investment or your effort is not generating any result. Doing this thing is called data-driven decisions. That is called PM. That's why it's a business intuition. Now business knows if I can sell this package, then I'm increasing my so that's why you're mostly going to get a combo discount. 
So if you go for certain like a dining table, if you buy a dining table and you buy some chair, you're going to discount it that buy because it's together. But if you buy one single chair separately, it will be very expensive. Make sense? Question concerns doubt. Good, good. Everyone is doing good so far. Okay, so now let's move to back to report. So we did that. Now let's do the map. So if I click on this other report, now I'm going to do map. There are two maps are there. So let's do one by one both. So first we'll click on this map. This is called free, uh, this map, but the bubble map. So let me make it bigger so you can see both at the same time. Let me minimize this. And then I'm going to put this map. Oh, sorry, my mistake. You have to click outside. So first you click here and you take this map. This is called bubble map. And then you click here somewhere. And now you click here. So that's the field map. So you have two map. Now, definitely we need a column. We need a column which is a geographic in it. In geography. So what is geography means? It's kind of country, country, or your state, or your zip code, your city, or like that. So those are those columns by default power we are understand. So here you can see here we have country. So definitely it's gonna understand this. If not, we might look for a zip code. Maybe do we have zip code? No, I do not have a zip code, but state is there. So that's fine also. So we'll see first of all. Country is USA, so there is nothing much we can do. I believe there is no other country. So that, that's not how. So let's do uh, state. So if I drag and drop state, there will be a bubble, bubble. So you can say map, fill map, but choose are disabled. To enable, go to the options setting and options go. Let me see this one has enabled. Because these are called, these are called preview. So some are preview. So this is the question in your exam. Preview. So what is preview means? So preview means what Power BI does, they, Microsoft, they make certain features, make it preview. Preview means you as a customer, you have to go to this tab, option, settings, options, global, and then you have to enable that. So if you enable that, then the, by default it is disabled, so map it will disable. So option, setting, option for security, I mean, you, you as a customer, you choose to enable, this is your choice. You use at your own risk. This is not a, we call, uh, what do you call, uh, this is not a published version. This is a preview, means you are having early access. But it is not live. It's not for all customers. So preview, it's there, you check it, you as a customer will use it, but if it doesn't work, you cannot blame Power BI. So those are like your own risk. So you can go here, let's do that. If you go to file menu, go to file menu, and then you can go to options, option setting, right? And in option setting, you go to options, options, and there are certain new features are preview features. So we need to select the option setting options. And the dialog box will open. And from there, you can select that. So here, you can see preview features. So preview features allows you to, you know, enable that. So we can enable some of the features. So do we have map somewhere here? So preview. Yeah, here. You see the set map visual, right? So I enable that. Uh, zoom map visual, let me do that also, if this is available. Basically, I'm trying to do map related thing. You can also, whichever you like, you can enable also. Again, these are good features. These are published features, but you may not be um, getting that because it's not part of your um, package, which we are using Power BI free, or sometimes it is not published for, because in an industry we call beta version. So this is called beta version. Beta version means you are using, only certain customers are using it, and they can try it out. Once you are doing, then it will be to LA, which is called limited availability, it means they choose maybe 10, 15 customers or first thousand customers like that. Beta version means some people choose by own risk, then they go to LA, LA means limited availability, where some of the customers may choose that, and then they go to GA. GA means general availability, means everyone will get. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are using, you can get that as well. So right now it looks like I have enabled this, 
tell me about this. I need to know this. I need to enable the link to me. It will all look good. So let's do OK. So enable one or more preview feature required restarting Microsoft BI. This change will affect after you restart. I'll say OK. So now let's see if that helps me. I want to save my work. I'll say, <clears throat> let's say today. I'm going to say Power BI query, so query one, save my work because it's going to restart. So I'm going to do that part. Let's just save. I'll come out. Saves. Let's go X. So I close that. So Power BI is done. Now let's start again. Power BI, desktop. Because it's now configure it. Hopefully that will solve my map problem. Power BI, the most important part is so simple. It's Microsoft product and free version has all goodies. Almost all goodies available in free version. So they have made it so easy for us to do analysis. I would suggest anybody can do analysis using this type of tool. Right, because there's no special programming skill required. Easy, powerful, and it's very handy. So I'm going to close this thing for now. And I'm going to go to File menu. I'll open the latest data. So File menu. Go on. File menu. Now I'm going to open my last report. So I'm going to open file menu and I'm going to open my last report, which I saved. Last week I talked about PBIX and PBIT. PBIT means template, then PBIX means template with data. So here we have everything. So if I open it, I will have everything. I will not lose my data, which I worked with Power BI query. My data will be here. Everything, whatever I have saved, should be available. And now let's see if I can do the work on the map. If not, maybe we will have to later on think about it. So right now I drag and drop state. Not for me. And if I drag and drop state, this is not coming. Are you guys able to get that or no? Because I have old Power BI desktop and normally it should enable, but I'm not sure you are also having the same issue. Let me see, there's a security they're saying. Visual, map visuals are disabled to enable them. Go to file option setting, option global security. Let me try that, the security thing. So option setting. Are you guys still getting error or I'm the only one getting error? People on phone, are you getting error or I'm the only one getting error? So we're also getting error, right? So what do you say? Power global global. Not gonna say that gets any errors. Sorry, my mistake. I'm not getting any error. I'm not able to hear you. Okay, oh man, <laughs> your voice is not coming. What? Sure. What what device you are using? You look like a robot. Yeah, this one. This one will help security. So security warning when they yeah, adding the vision. I will remove that. The authentication browser use map and field visuals. That's fine. Only use Microsoft certified. Not recommended. Allow any external to log without validation. No, that's fine. And wave preview warning level. No, that's fine. I don't have license license for Arc ArcGIS, so we are fine. Use map with field visuals. This is supposed to work, right? Uh, I think it should be fine. Let me see if I can try one more time. Like it works most of the time. Now it's working. Yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's try that. You guys can try also. File. Go to option setting. File. Let me repeat. 
file menu, right? Go to option setting, right? Option setting, from option setting, you can go to options. And from there, go to security. So I enable this thing because there are two options I did enable. First, you do use this one, right? And the second thing, there was a this. Uh, there was a disable. Yeah, this one. I unchecked this. There was check. I unchecked. So from check, I did uncheck, and this was uncheck. I made it check. That's two I did, and then I did okay. Now when I drag and drop, I can see that thing. Now this circle values you see here. The circle value, the, how big the circle is, that's based on the salary bar now it looks pretty kind of same but let's do, do this map so i'm going to do i already have map is there so i'm going to do state here so that's first state so now so these are states so you can see beautifully colored state now i want i want this circle should be increase based on the salary and decrease based on the salary so you can see here i have two map First map, second map. This is called field map, and this is called bubble map. So you can see bubble. Bubble size will increase, the bubble size will decrease based on the salary count. So right now my cursor is here, field map. Now, if I have this cursor, I will be adding the length, which is called here data. Where is the data thingy? Add data fields here. So add data fields here. Log uh, add data fields here. So that's me location impact up and tool tips. So I'm gonna put profit. So I put a profit here. Now if I move my mouse, it will give me profit for that that particular state. I can see that. I can see that. I can see the profit for that state. You can see that. Now here you can see here latitude and longitude so we cannot we don't have any field which will give you longitude and latitude but you can see i can get the data now this guy i want to do the same but again prime right now why did it happen i got just to be a few minutes back we solved that problem so we'll go back again at a single time of uh, allow preview which we did if that is allowed to go to security, required, the command date, so security warning, what's the problem? What's the problem? Now let me remove this date first. Okay. Yeah, let me do it. So I'm here, and I'm going to remove this date. Okay. Now, location. Let's put location here, state, and and then here you can see here data field size, data bubble size. I'll select, I'll select bubble size because longitude latitude I can do it. Bubble size, then I'll put profit. Now see here. So now looking at this bubble, I can see these state and these states are definitely doing more. Than these states and other small tiny states. You guys agree or not? So, and if you move my mouse, you are seeing like the real profit here. So, you can see this is what your profit is. And if you move your mouse here, your profit is quite less. Here, actually, it's negative and a bad, right? If you want to show only the only thing is a profit, then you can have filter. You can click here and you can apply filter. So, you can apply filter that you know, don't show me negative, right? So, you can see here filter. You can say filter. And you can apply the filter for this. So if you click on that, or you can expand this filter, and you can do visual level filter. So you can say, hey, don't show me the, uh, don't show me the state which is negative. So here you can say, right now state is a filter on visual state, sum of profit. And here you can say, you know what, if it's less than zero, show item when the item is 
uh, greater than zero, right? So at least greater than zero, like that. So don't show me if it's negative, and then you apply. So some state may not show up. You can see they're, they're gone. So you can apply only the state where the profit. So if somebody asks in exam, which state, which two state has the highest profit, then the answer is like that. So such kind of question you may get when you go for Power BI certification exam. The exam is not that hard, but you need to understand what they're asking, apply filter, apply visuals, apply data, etc. Question, concerns, doubt. Good, good, so far. So far, so good. Awesome. Now we are at 4.45. I still think uh, if I can complete one of that. So we have done this, we have done this. Let's do ribbon. That's the or maybe let, ribbon will do later, but let me just talk about this, our homework and Google Class. I'm hoping all of you have Google Class access. Is that true or no? Guys, I'm hoping you have Google Class access because I got some of the homework. It means I know you have Google Class access. I'll, I'll add the, I'll, I'll provide you my, um, you know, grading. Uh, but if you don't have Google Class access, please, please have Google Class access because I will be adding a small, project project for you initially i was thinking to do a group project but i'm thinking now because we are in a smaller group it make more sense that we do individual project again i will update this thing i have not posted yet i'm working on that so part of that i'll give you a certain sets of data where you can refer of your choice your first rule is to create a dashboard you need to create a dashboard that's your rule. You can create one dashboard or you create a bunch of dashboard. Now, that's the first aspect. But in order for you in your data, now data, there are certain sources out there where you can download free data. So when you download the free data, you may have a problem. One, you need to clean the data. Second, you need to set a relationship among the data. So you need to set a relationship among data because then you can do grouping and all. So example, if I have one table country and one table is country profit and table one table country state, then I need to set a relationship so I can have country state, state level profit. I can have nice beautiful report. So that's called data model. We have not covered, next week we're gonna cover. So you need to do data model. You need to also need to have cleaning, which is the Power BI query. So Power BI desktop, Power BI modeling, and Power BI query, you're gonna use that. It is also possible if you use R or Excel, whichever works for you, you can use it also. Then later on, you need to use the publishing aspects. So publishing aspect means your data will be, your Power BI will be published in the cloud so others can see that. However, there are certain aspects where you have to write a small functions or small coding, which we have not covered yet, which we'll cover next week called DAX. So DAX stands for Data Analytic Expression, if you are going for certification exam, then DAX is very, very powerful. You will be asked a lot of questions about that. So next week, I'm gonna cover Power BI model and DAX. That's pretty much I will cover. And there are six, seven items I need to cover. Once we cover the next week, week after, I'll cover about Power BI optimizations and all, but then you're ready for the projects. So I'll, most likely I'll summarize, but project is we'll try to do individuals at this moment. Or you, work, you guys wanna work in a group, what do you guys think? What's the desired thing? You want to work independently at your own pace or you want to work in a group? How do you want to work? Independent. Independent. What about others? One. <laughs> independently is okay. Independent is okay. So yeah, that's fine. You can do independent. I have a, I'm started working on that part. So I'll, I'll create like this. This is what I'm doing. What I'm going to do nicely, I'm creating a confluence forum. So I'll create a forum and I'll put all things. So this is my one of the to do for my weekend. So you can see here, I'm creating a requirement which normally you will see in your real uh, work when you go to real work. So having such kind of work would be very helpful. And if you can publish your work, that would be very good because when you go in interview, people will ask you, did you publish any work? Can you share the link with us? So that gives you real, uh, what do you call it? Um, quality work. They can see that, right? Many of our students who went for interview, they ask if the Power BI published work or Tableau published work. And if you show that, it's kind of right away you can impress that, hey, look at that, I have done this work. 
So when you do the project, the most important part is the data. Make sure you pick the data, make sure you use all those learning here. So some of the things I have already covered, which you can get started. So my goal here is this weekend, I'll put that project. So you will have access to project and I'll also put the record in here. Okay, and that's all I have for today. Any questions, concerns, doubts before we adjourn? I hope you enjoy. Power BI Query is one of the best tool in the world. Uh, that's the reason Power BI is right now, you know, in popularity. Good.